I rise today to talk about America's debt problem. The fact that we are here today to debate raising America's debt limit is a sign of leadership failure. It is a sign that the U.S. government can't pay its own bills. It's a sign that we now depend on the ongoing financial assistance from foreign countries to finance our government's reckless fiscal policies. Over the past five years, our federal debt has increased by three and a half trillion to eight point six trillion. That is trillion with a T. That is money that we have borrowed from the Social Security Trust Fund, borrowed from China, Japan, borrowed from American taxpayers. And over the next five years, between now and 2011, the president's budget will increase the debt by almost another three and a half trillion. Numbers, numbers that are large, sometimes hard to understand. Some people wonder why they matter. Here's why. This year, the federal government will spend $220 billion on interest. That is more money to pay interest on our national debt then we will spend on Medicaid and the state's children health insurance program. That is more money to pay interest on our debt this year than we will spend on education, homeland security, transportation, veterans benefits combined. It is more money in one year than we are likely to spend to rebuild the devastated Gulf Coast in a way that honors America's best. And the cost of our debt is one of the fastest growing expenses in the federal budget. The rising debt is a hidden domestic enemy, robbing our cities, states of critical investments in infrastructure like bridges, ports, levees, robbing our families and our children of critical investments in education, health care reform, robbing our seniors of the retirement and health security they have counted on. Every dollar we pay in interest is a dollar that's not going to investment in America's priorities. Instead, interest payments are a significant tax on all Americans, a, a debt tax that Washington doesn't want to talk about. If Washington were serious about honest tax relief in this country, we would see an effort to reduce our national debt by returning to responsible fiscal policies. But we are not doing that. Despite repeated efforts by Senator Conrad and Feingold, the Senate continues to return to reject the return to the common sense PAYGO rules that used to apply. Previously, PAYGO rules applied to both increases of mandatory spending and to tax cuts. The Senate had to abide by the common sense budgeting principles of balancing expenses and revenues. Unfortunately, the principle was abandoned and now the demands of the budget discipline apply only to spending. As a result, tax breaks have not been paid for by reductions in federal spending and thus the only only way to pay for them has to be to increase our deficit to historically high levels and borrow more and more and more money. Now we have to pay for those tax breaks plus the cost of borrowing for them. Instead of reducing the deficit, as some people claim, the fiscal policies of this administration and its allies in Congress will add more than $600 million in debt for each of the next five years. That is why I will once again co-sponsor the PAYGO amendment and continue to hope that my colleagues will return to a smart rule that has worked in the past and can work again. Our debt also matters internationally. My friend, the ranking member of the Senate Budget Committee, likes to remind us that it took 42 presidents, 225 years, to run up a $1 trillion of foreign-held debt. This administration did more than that in just five years. Now, there is nothing wrong with borrowing from foreign countries, but we must remember that the more we depend on foreign nations to lend us money, the more economic security is tied to the whims of foreign leaders whose interests might not align with ours. Increasing America's debt weakens us domestically and internationally. Leadership means that the buck stops here. Instead, Washington is shifting the burden of bad choices today onto the backs of our children and our grandchildren. America has a debt problem and a failure of leadership. America deserves better. Those are the words of then-Senator Barack Obama in March of 2006, in his own words.